Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Art, Games, and Tech. My name is Gilbert Matos, and today we're going to be covering falling platforms. Now, this video is going to be based on my all-in-one platform tutorial. It's just going to be the first section, so you just go ahead and watch that in case you haven't. So before we actually jump into the code, let me show you the demo. All right, so now that you've seen the demo, if this is what you're looking for, then you've come to the right channel. So our first step is to create an object called Falling Platform. After that, we need to assign this object a sprite. I have done that already, so if you haven't, please go ahead and do so. Now, the last thing that we need to do is to make our jump through platform its parent. And then we're done with this object. So go ahead and close it. The next thing that we're going to be doing is setting up the variables and events needed inside of the jump through object. So go ahead and, op and open that object. Now let's go ahead and give it an alarm event and then go into the create event and make sure you right click and select the third option, which is called three column option. This will allow us to drag each event window into any of the open columns. This is great for saving time while having things visible and ready. Now, drag each of the events to a column, just like I do in the video. Next, in the create event, go ahead and create a variable called start falling and set it to false. Right after that, copy that same variable and paste it in the alarm zero event that we created previously, but set it to true. Our next step will only need this the end step event, so close all other columns since we won't be needing them anymore for the rest of the video. In the end step event, we're going to check if the current object is a, fall, is a fallen platform. And if it is, we want to run this code from inside it. Now, first, we need to store the ID of the object running the code. We'll do that with a temporary variable and we'll give it the value of the keyword ID. ID is the unique identification number of set instance in our game. Next, we'll run a with statement with our player object. This with statement will handle setting the platform fallen behavior and the interaction this one has with the player. Right inside this statement, we're going to make sure this platform is not falling by using the this platform that start falling variable. Make sure to use the exclamation mark first, since I forgot to actually do that from the beginning. Once that is done, we're going to check if the player is on top of the platform and not clipping through it. We'll use this to set up the alarm in 40 frames or game steps. For now, we're done with this portion of the code, so we wrap it up inside of a region. Now, let's handle moving the platform. Let's exit the with statement for a second. Let's open up a new region. This portion is going to handle the movement of the platform. Let's call it platform movement. We're just going to check if the platform is falling so that we can assign the underscore V speed, the move speed variable value. This will handle how fast the platform falls. Now on the next line, we'll just apply the underscore V speed to the platform's Y so that it can move down and that's it. Next, Go into the room and drop some falling platform instances. I have already done that, so I'll pause the video and when you're done, continue. Before we move on to the next part, let's see what we've done in action by running the game, pressing F5. I must add that although running the game saves it before it runs, don't forget to save often as you go. Well, look at that, it works. You jump on the platform and it falls. We'll still don't move down with it yet, but we know we've done a great job so far. Go ahead and close the game window and let's head back to coding. With this portion, we're going to be moving the player down with the platform. Go ahead and open a new region inside the with player statement and right underneath the first region. Let's check if the platform is falling. Then let's check if we're above it. We do this by using place meeting on the y-axis plus the amount of pixels the platform speed is. With the platform ID, we have stored using this platform, the this platform variable. Now, before we go ahead and start moving the player with the platform, we have to make sure we're not colliding with any solids at the speed of the platform once again. We're not gonna be using the underscore V speed variable, but the underscore move speed variable. Then we just simply add that underscore move speed variable to the player's Y. Now we can go ahead and run the game to see if everything works just fine. And look at that. It's working wonderfully well. Great job. Everything is snappy and smooth, and I like that. Now we have one more thing left to do. And keep in mind, you can accomplish this however you feel is best for your project or game. We need to make sure these platforms are being destroyed when they are no longer visible or gone down far enough. The way I'll handle this is using an outside room event where we're just going to add instance destroy to save up on memory's resources. Once you've done that, run the game and see it happening in action. 
All right, folks, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something useful. You can get the project file in my Patreon page or through my Gumroad page. Don't forget to like, favorite, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get notified right away for more videos. Until next time, take good care of yourself. A big thank you to all of the heroes that support this channel on Patreon. Thank you.